Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Foundation Revision video. The 72 days are going to your GCSE Mavs exams. And if you've been watching these videos from the start, well done, you deserve a medal for sticking with it. And I hope you're finding them useful. In today's video, we're going to be focusing on perimeter and symmetry. Two different topics here, but obviously both shape, space and measure topics. But I'm doing two topics today just so we can get a bit more material covered to leave us some more time towards the end where I'm going to be making special papers and stuff and uh, tests and stuff for you to do before the exam and we'll go through those and so on. So I'm sort of going through a couple of topics today just so that we've got a bit more time towards the end to do some general revision things. So perimeter, obviously to find the perimeter of a shape, we're going to be finding the perimeter of shapes and that's card number 16 if you've got the revision cards. So remember, perimeter is the distance around the outside of a shape. And in this video, we're going to be showing you how to do that. And I'll be giving you some questions to try yourself. We'll also be looking at symmetry and the revision card on symmetry is card number 32. And we'll also be looking at rotational symmetry as well. So we'll go through those and I'll give you some questions to try. So let's get started. So the perimeter of a shape is the distance around the outside of it. So here's a question that says, find the perimeter of this rectangle. So feel free to press pause and to work out the perimeter of this rectangle. Okay, so to find the perimeter of the rectangle, we need to write down the length of the missing side. So if the top of it's 8 centimetres, that means the length of the base of it is 8 centimetres as well. So that's 8 centimetres. And if the length of the right-hand side is 17 centimetres, the length of the left-hand side would be 17 centimetres also. So to find the perimeter of the rectangle, we just need to do 8 centimetres plus 17 centimetres plus 8 centimetres plus 17 centimetres. So let's do that. So 8 plus 17 plus 8 plus 17. So 8 plus 17 is equal to 25 plus 8 is equal to 33, plus 17 is equal to 50. So the perimeter of this rectangle would be 50 centimetres, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says, find the perimeter of this isosceles triangle. So feel free to press pause and find the perimeter of this isosceles triangle. So to find the perimeter of this triangle, we're going to add up the distances around the outside. Now we do have a missing side here, but with an isosceles triangle, two of the sides have got the same length. And as you can see, the left-hand side has got the little dash on it, and so does the right-hand side. So if the length for the left-hand side is 9 centimetres, the length for the right-hand side would be 9 centimetres. So we just need to do 9 plus 13 plus 9, and that would be the perimeter of this triangle. So 9 plus 13 plus 9 is equal to, well 9 plus 13 is 22, plus 9 is equal to 31. So the perimeter of this triangle would be 31 centimetres, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, this time we've got this L shape, we've been asked to find the perimeter of this L shape, so feel free to press pause and find the perimeter of this L shape. Okay, so if I want to find the perimeter of this L shape, what I would want to do is find the length of the missing sides. So let's start off with the horizontal lengths. So the width for the whole shape is 10 centimetres, and the length for this part is 6 centimetres. So 6 centimetres plus this length must be equal to 10 centimetres. So that means that this length here would be 4 centimetres. So that's great, we've found one of the missing lengths, now we need to find this one. So let's look at the vertical lines. So the height of the whole shape is 11 centimetres, and this part's 3 centimetres. And then, so that means that 3 plus this length would be 11 centimetres, so this must be 8 centimetres. So that's fantastic. We find the lengths of the missing sides. Now let's start at the top and just add up the distances around the outside. So we're going to do 6 plus 8 plus 4 plus 3 plus 10 plus 11. So let's do that. 6 plus 8 plus 4 plus 3 plus 10 plus 11. And we'll add those up and see what we get. So 6 plus 8 is equal to 14, plus 4 is equal to 18, plus 3 is equal to 21, plus 10 is equal to 31 plus 11 is equal to 42. So the perimeter of this shape would be 42 centimetres, and that's it. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at another question. Okay, so let's have a look at our next question. So our next question, we're told that a rectangle and a square have got the same perimeter, so the perimeter of this rectangle and square are the same. And we've been asked to find the width for the rectangle, so we want to find the width for this rectangle. So press pause and try this question now. Okay, so if I was doing this question, the first thing I would want to do is find the perimeter of the square. So because the length of each side of the square is the same, that means that if this side is 23, this side is 23 centimetres, this side is 23 centimetres, and this side is 23 centimetres. So we could do 23 plus 23 plus 23 plus 23, or we could just do 23 multiplied by 4, and that'll give us the perimeter of the square. So 4 times 3 is equal to 12, so let's put our 2 down and carry a 1. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9. So that means the perimeter of the square is equal to 92 centimetres. That's the perimeter of the square. And you would have got that if you've done 23 plus 23 plus 23 plus 23. Now, because we've got the same perimeter, the perimeter of the rectangle would also be 92 centimetres. So that means if we add up the distances around the outside, that's going to be equal to 92. Now, if the length of the top is 37, the length of the base is going to be 37 as well. So if we do 37 plus 37, 
and take that away from 92. That will tell us what's left for the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And then if we half it, we can then find the width for the rectangle. So let's do that. So let's do 37 plus 37, and that's going to be equal to 74. So that's 74 centimeters if we add up the length of the top and the bottom. Now, if we take that away from the 92, the whole perimeter, we do 92 take away 74, that's equal to 18. That means the left-hand side and the right-hand side, when we add them together, they would have to be 18, because if we do 18 plus 37 plus 37, we get 92. Now, if this side and this side have got the same length as each other, if we do 18 divided by 2, that's going to be equal to 9. So that means the length of this side is 9 centimeters. The width of it is 9 centimeters, and that's it. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our last question. We're told the perimeter of this regular pentagon and the perimeter of this regular hexagon are equal to each other. So the perimeter of this regular pentagon and the perimeter of this regular hexagon are equal. And we've been asked to find x, the length of the side for the regular hexagon. So both of these polygons, the pentagon and the hexagon, are regular. That means the length of each of their sides are the same. So if this side's 18 centimetres, this side would be 18 centimetres, this side would be 18 centimetres. So that means if we want to find the perimeter of the pentagon, we just need to do 18 plus 18 plus 18 plus 18 plus 18. Or, because it's a regular pentagon, we can just take the length of one of the sides, which is 18, and do 18 multiplied by 5. And that'll tell us the perimeter of the regular pentagon. So 5 times 8 is equal to 40. Put our 0 down, carry a 4. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 4 is 9. So the perimeter of this regular pentagon is 90 centimetres. So that's the perimeter of the regular pentagon. Now we're told the perimeters are the same. The perimeter of this pentagon and the perimeter of this regular hexagon are equal to each other. So that means the perimeter of this regular hexagon is also equal to 90 centimetres. Now the length of each of these sides are the same. The six sides have all got the same length. So if we do 90 divided by 6, we can find the length of x, the length of this side. So let's just do 90 divided by 6. So 90 divided by 6. How many 6 is going to 9? 1 remainder 3. And how many 6 is going to 30? That's 5. So that's equal to 15. So that means that x is equal to 15 centimetres. And if we do 15 plus 15 plus 15 plus 15 plus 15 plus 15, that's equal to 90 as well. So that means the regular pentagon and the regular hexagon would have the same perimeter. And that's it. Okay, so we've had a look at perimeter. Now let's have a look at symmetry. So we're going to look at line symmetry and we'll also look at rotational symmetry. So line of symmetry, well, if a shape's got a line of symmetry, whenever you fold it, it will land on itself. So here's the part of the Code Mouse Revision card. So as you can see, an isosceles triangle would have one line of symmetry, this vertical line of symmetry, because if you folded it, it would land on itself. A rectangle has got two lines of symmetry, this vertical line of symmetry and the horizontal line of symmetry. If you folded it across that way, it would land on itself, or folded it across that way, it would land on itself. Now you wouldn't have the diagonals because if you try to fold a rectangle diagonally, get a piece of paper and try it, it won't land on itself properly. So the diagonals aren't lines of symmetry, so a rectangle's got two lines of symmetry. A square, however, it has four lines of symmetry, so it would have the vertical, horizontal, and the two diagonals. It's four lines of symmetry. A parallelogram wouldn't have a line of symmetry. You couldn't draw a line of symmetry for a parallelogram. An equilateral triangle will have three lines of symmetry, so it would have three lines of symmetry. A regular hexagon would have six lines of symmetry. A regular pentagon would have five lines of symmetry, and so on. So it's important to know what symmetry is and whether a shape's got line of symmetry or not, but also to be able to draw lines of symmetry on shapes. So symmetry is very important, and if you've got those window pens, remember to jot it down on your window, draw a little diagram, and remind yourself what line symmetry is, or your cheat sheet. Okay, so we've looked at line symmetry. Now let's have a look at rotational symmetry. So to find the order of rotational symmetry that a shape has, what you do is you take the shape and you rotate it through 360 degrees, and you count how many times it lands on itself. So this rhombus, if we rotate it through 360 degrees, so no, 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 one, and then through another 180 degrees around a 360, two. It lands on itself twice. So we would say that this rhombus has got order of rotational symmetry two. So this order of rotational symmetry for this rhombus is two. So let's have a look at this question. So the question says, circle the shape that has got order of rotational symmetry four, or rotational symmetry order four. So we've got four shapes. We've got this heart, this square, this star, and this isosceles triangle. Pause the video now and think which of these shapes has got order of rotational symmetry four. Okay, so let's have a look at the heart. If you rotated that through 360 degrees, it would land on itself once. So the order of rotational symmetry for that heart would be 1. In terms of the star, the five-pointed star, if you rotated this through 360 degrees, it would land on itself five times. So the order of rotational symmetry for the star would be 5. In terms of the isosceles triangle, if you rotated this through 360 degrees, it would land on itself once. So it would have order of rotational symmetry 1. And finally, the square. If you rotated that square through 360 degrees, it would land on itself four times. So the order of rotational symmetry would be 4. So you would have circled the square. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at perimeter, we've looked at line symmetry, and we've looked at rotational symmetry. And that's it. So we've gone through perimeter, so finding the distance around the outside of shapes. And we've also looked at symmetry, so line symmetry and rotational symmetry. I really hope you found this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, I just want to say well done on sticking with these videos. I really hope you find them useful. And also remember to be doing your fiber days. So doing those numeracy fiber days, your foundation fiber days. And also if you're aiming for that top grade, try those foundation plus fiber days as well. 
I really hope you found these resources useful. Thanks very much, and I'll see you later. Cheers. Bye.